Previously on The Hills. If Freaky Friday hadn't already made Lindsay Lohan a household name, she was now. The picture of coveted teen lifestyle in the early 2000s. If there was anything the tabloids wanted to eat up on, it was a Disney kid gone wrong story. That summer, things became more serious, and in hindsight, this was the beginning of the end. <laughs> Kristen ended up telling the story in Rolling Stone magazine, which obviously did not fare well for Lindsay's image. While this is all typical Lindsay tabloid drama, that summer things became more serious, and in hindsight, this was the beginning of the end. Then at a Cartier party that same month, we get the first glimpses of Lindsay being shockingly thin. From this point, this is all anyone can talk about in the tabloids. Some people are saying that she's anorexic, bulimic, a cokehead. Some tabloids are sharing her diet tips on how she keeps off pounds. But overall, all of the tabloids were hyper fixated on her and every female celebrity for that matter's body or weight. There was even a website called feedlindsay.com with petitions and t-shirts. So you can imagine that if Lindsay were struggling with an eating disorder, then this type of praise or disapproval of her new look could be equally dangerous. But what do I know? I don't write for a major publication. Her and Nicole are really kind of BFFs at this time, and they're both on the forefront of this new skinny thing that's happening. You look really skinny, I have to tell you. I mean, you look really skinny, yeah. though. You look really skinny. Nicole weighed in on Howard Stern's show at 97 pounds. The most fascinating part about this to me is that these are both girls that were known a year or so before for specifically being the curvier ones of their set compared to Paris Hilton or Rachel McAdams or Misha Barton, all these super, super skinny stars. But I suppose that goes to show what that sort of coverage of someone's weight can do, regardless of whether it's meant to be positive or negative. Despite the rumors, Lindsay was adamant that she was not using drugs and she was not starving herself. I'm grown, I'm, I'm 19, I, I hit puberty when I was 17, so. <laughs> In May, Michael's finally sentenced to 16 months to four years in prison. And you know the drill, more bad Michael equals more Lindsay press, which equals more bad Lindsay headlines. In June, Lindsay gets in a wreck while paparazzi are literally chasing her down. This is a huge controversy because the narrative being spread by the paparazzi was that Lindsay was already known to be kind of a reckless driver. She drove an AMG that went zero to 60 in four seconds. And they said that this was all some kind of elaborate ploy to get her dad out of the news, which I don't think is really a theory worth any credit because Lindsay was quite vocal at this this time about how much she did not care about her dad and she did not want to be affiliated with him so i don't think she would go through the trouble of somehow causing a wreck with the paparazzi and just to get more attention on herself and less on him i really just don't buy it not to mention that the paparazzi were notorious at this time for being way too invasive on the roads they were constantly blocking the roads blocking celebrities cars or following them just doing way too much this wreck actually led to the implementation of new laws in la that stopped paparazzi from being able to follow cars which is partly why we have much less juicy celebrity paparazzi drama these days and more of this <laughs> In June, Lindsay gets in more drama when she throws an after party for the MTV Movie Awards and Jessica and Hoedown Simpson are left standing in the street like common peasants. Leslie says, maybe their names got lost on the list. In an interview with The Sun, Lindsay maintains that she is not on drugs and not starving herself. She says that when she was in the hospital, she lost a bunch of weight and that made her feel good. So after that, she maintained a healthy diet and got a trainer and her new figure was just the product of that. Sure, girl. Then Herbie Fully Loaded premieres, and there's a lot of speculation before this movie came out because there were some people saying that Disney had to go in and make her boobs smaller or adjust her bust to make it more appropriate or something. But I'm just like, y'all dressed her. Like, put her in a loose shirt or put her in something with a higher neckline or thicker straps or whatever it is that's not appropriate would have been their doing, right? Is she supposed to take her boobs off before she goes to set in the morning? Like, but Disney denied this rumor, but they did, however, take Lindsay off all the promotional material for the movie, and it's rumored that this was because she didn't look anything like she did in the movie at the time of its release. At the premiere, Lindsay stormed out of the theater because apparently a song she recorded for the big race scene was relegated to the credits. This only helped to further her bratty diva image. Speaking of which, all summer we see Lindsay hanging out with the skinniest bitches, smoking the fattest Joes, and making out with the creepiest old men around. The tabloids have more to report about about her personal and social life than they do about her career. 
or at least they will as long as she continues to star in children's movies. But Lindsay's plan to combat this is her new role in the movie A Prairie Home Companion, alongside Meryl Streep, Lily Tomlin, and Woody Harrelson. Our hope was that this movie was a more adult role and it could shift the narrative back to her talent and rising stardom. In August, Lindsay reportedly hires a trainer to help her gain weight, and she seems to be really getting back on track from the public's point of view. She got a huge deal with Mattel to have her own My Scene doll and be in the My Scene Goes to Hollywood movie, which Mattel stressed was a huge honor. I mean, she was now part of the Barbie franchise, so the moms in the blogs can say what they want, but she was the affiliated star of two of the biggest companies that appeal to children, and she was making her money regardless of what they had to say. In October, Lindsay gets in another wreck with paparazzi and she goes to the hospital, except for the paparazzi weren't found at fault for this one, so it's kind of a lose for Lindsay. In November, she starts filming a movie about John Lennon's killer starring Jared Leto, for which he had to gain 67 pounds, and that brought us these magnificent photos of fat Jared Leto. She also performs at the AMAs and it's Yo, when I was looking stuff up to talk about this, I found out that her friend had actually just died and she was sick, so she wasn't gonna perform, but she did it to pay tribute to her friend. And they talk about this friend on her mom's reality show, which I'm going to bring up in a minute, but um, yeah, I just thought I should mention that because that's really sad. She says something about it at the end, but you can't really hear. It's kind of drowned out by applause, but yeah. <laughs> In December, Lindsay's second album, A Little More Personal, drops, and it receives mostly mixed reviews, but it peaks at 20 on the Billboard 200, and her single Confessions made it to 57 on the Hot 100. The album was, like it said, a little more personal. The content of the album was mostly surrounding her relationship with her father. She had a single titled Father to Daughter that got pretty popular, and she directed the music video herself, but despite the dark subject matter, critics still said that the album lacked any depth. There are rumors that she's dating Joaquin Phoenix at this time, which by the way, we can cross-reference all of these rumored relationships with the list. Okay, quick context on the list. It was found in the Beverly Hills Hotel after Lindsay was at a party. Someone who was there said that allegedly she was bragging about all the famous people she slept with and she made this list on Scattergory's paper. 36 lucky fellas, including Ashton Kutcher, Stavros, Benicio Del Toro, Heath Ledger, and guess who? She misses an appearance on Regis and Kelly, which really doesn't look good for her. They actually find out on air that she isn't coming and her rep said that she had food poisoning, but then that same night she's on TRL. So it's not a good look. Yeah, Lindsay Lohan sick, she's not coming. Well, that's kind of a, a blow to what we're gonna do is Hey! She has food poisoning. What'd they find out about five after nine? <laughs> Around this time, she also moves into the Chateau Marmont, Hollywood. Then we move to 2006, and the year starts off with a bang. Lindsay allegedly embarrasses herself in front of a bunch of A-listers at GQ's Man of the Year Awards by getting into a fight with her old assistant or something. I don't know, but she looks bad again. The next day, she's hospitalized for an asthma attack, which isn't surprising to me because she's in like the cigarette capital of the world so that same month she's out partying with kate moss who is supposedly leading her into the right direction but in 2005 the daily mirror published photos of kate doing cocaine at a recording studio which led to her going to rehab and considering she went to rehab several times following this i think i'm safe in saying that she was not leading Lindsay into the right direction one night when they're out partying Lindsay asks a girl in the bathroom if she has anything to write with before proceeding to write scarlet is a bloody cunt XXL. This theorized to be about Scarlett Johansson, who had no public feud with Lindsay at the time. She did date Jared Leto, but that was long before Lindsay was ever seen with him, but we both know that that won't stop Lindsay. The drama ended when she was seen attending Scarlett's episode of SNL, unimportant but with Sean Lennon, like John Lennon's son Sean Lennon. I know she was filming a movie about his dad, but still just a weird combination to me. In February, Lindsay does the cover of Vanity Fair, and this is controversial because in the article they said, she now admits she began using drugs a little, but quickly says, I've gotten that out of my system. When asked later if those drugs included cocaine, she gets flustered and denies it and says, I don't want people to think that I've done, you know what I mean? It's kind of a sore subject. I've lost a family member over it practically. The day after this admission, Sloan Zelnick goes into a tailspin, attempts to erase the drugs from the record, and then wonders aloud how we will spin it. This picked up a lot of speed, obviously, because it confirmed everyone's suspicions that she was doing drugs and that that was, in fact, the reason for her weight loss. Lindsay and Sloan did their best to backtrack this quote and say that it was fabricated, but the harm was pretty much already done. That spring, we have a leaked bong photo, a possible rekindling with Wilmer, a rumored fling with Jamie Dornan, check, and a sort of intervention with Tina Fey and Lorne Michaels where they tell Lindsay that they're legitimate 
legitimately fearful for their health and that they fear that she's throwing away her gift of acting. Which is something you might have noticed I haven't mentioned for a second. But no fear, she's got a new movie coming out. Except it flops, the movie's a dumpster fire, and she gets her first Raspberry Award for Worst Actress. So clearly the career is not doing good, so let's get back to what is doing good, and baby, that's the drama. Following her cancelled engagement to Paris Lostis, Paris Hilton started dating Greek shipping heir Stavros Niarchos. They were dating pretty on and off for like six months. In May, during one of their breakups, he and Lindsay have a bit of an entanglement. This brings us Firecrotch, Firecrotch the Song, Firecrotch the Holiday, and Firecrotch the Shirt. For more about that, watch this video. Lindsay's new movie, A Prairie Home Companion, releases and it does pretty good. She works alongside A-listers and they all have great things to say about her, which would have been great if the people who wrote the tabloids were actually paying attention to this movie and not the war happening between her and Brandon Davis, who after a week of getting rejected from every club in LA, thankfully checked himself into rehab for cocaine and alcohol after being threatened to be cut off. But first, Starbucks running my fire crotch tea. This summer, we get more nonsense from Lindsay. She goes to the CFDA Awards, where allegedly Anna Wintour, Vogue editor-in-chief, had to tell Karl Lagerfeld to control his guest after she took several bathroom breaks to powder her nose, if you smell what I'm stepping in. She fights with Diddy at Butter, her Blackberry gets hacked, she points the finger at Paris, she becomes involved with Kabbalah. We do see a glimmer of hope at her 20th birthday party where she celebrated alongside her Paris Hilton replacement Ivanka Trump. She meets Harry Morton and they start dating. Later she signs a $2 million deal with Proactive and then she starts filming a new movie with Jane Fonda called Georgia Rule. But things aren't going great. While she's filming Georgia Rule, she's still partying a lot. One night she's at Jeremy Piven's pool party, the next night she's partying late with Harry, and then the next night she's in the hospital with a classic aid of heat exhaustion. This causes the CEO of Morgan Creek Productions, sorry I misspoke in my last Last video I said it was the director but it was actually James G Robinson who was the head of the studio producing Georgia Rule but Lindsay's behavior causes him to write a letter which is leaked by the smoking gun that pretty much says that she's become a nuisance to the filming and her irresponsibility and constant late night partying are a detriment to her relationship with the cast and crew and has cost them a lot of money. Dina tries to push back on this saying that the letter was out of line but it was too late. Lindsay was already seen as the ultimate liability by pretty much every film studio and this really affected her career and is likely why we don't see much of Lindsay Lohan on the big screen today. In August, she seems to start moving in the right direction. She starts showing up on time to work. The paparazzi aren't catching her partying all the time, so it seems like the letter kind of snapped her back into shape. She has an interview for Elle magazine where, in response to being asked about Firecrotch, she famously says Paris is obviously comfortable making videos. She also says that the paparazzi are obsessed with her weight and what she's doing all the time, but no one's talking about Hoedown Simpson's new nose. And I don't care, any Ashley Simpson slander is funny to me. Then that same month, she loses a Birkin containing a million dollars worth of jewelry at Heathrow Airport, and and Harry tells paparazzi that he and Lindsay are broken up while she says they're together. It's a bad month for Lindsay and everything seems to be going to shit. In November, still underage, Lindsay wears a 90 days sober AA chip, which sparks rumors that she was an AA which she was. Then she hosts the World Music Awards and does a decidedly terrible job. They kept having to bring other announcers on stage and everyone was getting booed. And Michael Jackson basically got tricked into ending his hiatus after Lindsay announced that he was gonna come perform. It was a mess. Everyone, I wanna chant, Michael, Michael, I love you, Michael. Michael Jackson! Then Robert Altman dies and Lindsay publishes a kind of bizarre open letter and she ends it with a be adequate. And everyone speculates that she was either drunk or high when she wrote it, but Leslie denies this and says it was straight from the heart into the Blackberry. It was raw. This is, for my peoples, we'll just love somebody. this is when Harry and Paris are seen hooking up and we get this. Paris is a cut. And you may be thinking that I'm only pointing out the negative things that were happening for Lindsay at this time, but this is literally all that was happening. She was constantly hitting the fan for her. On November 21st, the National Enquirer reports that Lindsay overdosed on cocaine and painkillers. This was never confirmed or like really reported by anyone else. She was allegedly resuscitated by a doctor on the scene and refused to go to the hospital or to rehab, so. Then we get the incident where Lindsay alleges Paris hit her and Paris publicist stages Bimbo Summit, which Paris claims was Lindsay intruding, but sweet charitable Paris saved her from the mean paparazzi by letting her seek refuge in her car, which is why her publicist led her there. And then the next night, sweet charity princess Paris Hilton tells Lindsay a coked up whore at Hyde, according to X-17, and tells security Firecrotch isn't well. 
welcome anymore. From this point, things just get more and more bizarre until we end up to a point where I think we're all familiar with here so walk with me in december leslie announces that Lindsay has been attending aa for like a year which pretty much defeats the purpose of the whole anonymous thing but whatever then Lindsay writes a mass email that gets leaked where she says the paparazzi have basically ruined her image she plans to press charges against her old assistant for selling stories about her to the national Enquirer, and she's enlisting the help of al gore to help her clean up her image in an interview with usa today she says the photo with paris and britney was a stunt who would have guessed she also admits to drinking underage who would have guessed? I'm sure you can see why people were starting to get bored with Lindsay. On one hand, there were people who wanted to see her acting or singing or doing anything using her talents in any way, and they weren't being pleased. And on the other hand, there's people who were invested in her personal life, which has just become the kind of sad revolving door of the same stuff over and over. If not for the drama, Lindsay's pretty irrelevant at this time. After the Golden Globes, Lindsay was allegedly distraught after James Franco wouldn't hook up with her, which found her crying in the hotel hallway into the late hours of the night the next day. She checked into Wonderland Detox Facility, but it was less of a rehab for her and more of a retreat from paparazzi. Chapter 27, the movie she was filming with Fat Jared Leto comes out and critics say it's shit. She turns down a role in the movie, A Woman of No Importance, out of fear of spreading herself too thin again. In April, her MySpace is hacked and made public. Later that month, a model accuses her of stealing thousands of dollars worth of clothes from her house while she was gone. The model in question is the ex-girlfriend of Nicole Richie's new man, DJ AM, and the person who played Britney in the defamatory Crimea River music video. And this leads to these texts being sent from Nicole. two boxes of clothing I was gonna donate to the Salvation Army. I'm sure there are some good pieces in there, so let me know when my assistant can drop them off for you. Also, there will be a book in there of original insults. It'll help you in the future. Are you okay? I know you have nothing, but Jesus Christ, are you so desperate for new clothes that you're willing to file a police report to get some? I'll go to Goodwill for you and pick out a nice new pair of pants for you to wear and split open because you're getting so f***ing huge. If you're gonna do drugs, at least have something to show for it. Lose some damn pounds and get a life. You're f***ing delusional, empathetic, and embarrassing. Next time you write Lindsay, you'll be dealing with the wrath of me. Consider this a warning. Nicole Richie. P.S. Blow a horn! In May, one of her friends leaks a video of her doing coke in the bathroom at a club. This is the first piece of concrete evidence that she's doing coke as opposed to just drinking, which I'm pretty sure people didn't really need convincing of, but the evidence was there now. Now we get to Memorial Day weekend 2007. Lindsay's out partying as she does with her rumored boo, Samantha Ronson, all Friday night. Then Saturday night, they party again until Lindsay crashes her car into a curb where she gets her first DUI. The next night, she's back at it, calling in a night in Samantha Ronson's car, birthing this iconic photo. After this, she checks into the Malibu rehab facility promises. Then photos of her and Vanessa Manillo playing with a knife at Sean Lennon's house get leaked. And this was kind of worse for Vanessa than it was for Lindsay. Lindsay was already in so many scandals that it was like, whatever. But Vanessa had a pretty squeaky clean image at this time and this made her a target for subsequent tabloid attacks. There's also someone who hacks Lindsay's computer and leaves a file on her desktop saying that they have photos of her and her ex-boyfriend Callum Best. The person who claimed to own the photo said that Lindsay emailed him and said, all I know is that someone broke into my computer and left a file on my desktop saying that he got pictures Cal took from me naked. Leslie told Page Six that anything is possible and her lawyers had been contacted. There's also a book released called Star Sitter, where a woman alleges that she worked as a teacher for a starlet who she calls Maddie Malone. And Maddie, at the time when the author Andrea Dana claims to have been working for her, was a bratty rising star whose parents were on the verge of getting divorced and whose mom had dreams of being on Broadway. In the book, Dana says Maddie would say things like, call f***ing Dior, or I'll have you off the payroll faster than you can spell it. And I don't know, y'all. I don't feel like anyone in the world actually says stuff like this. I could have just never been around a celebrity diva. But when I hear stories like this, I just don't believe them. And it reminds me of the stories people would say Ariana Grande demands to be carried everywhere. Like, I literally just don't believe that. And Lindsay's not the only one with the drama. It also gets exposed this month that her mom was actually never a rockette. So what did she do? Who knows, but she definitely was never a rockette. The scandals do not end there though. After spending a wholesome 4th of July with her siblings in Malibu and having an alcohol-free 21st birthday, Lindsay's seen wearing a scram alcohol monitoring bracelet in sobriety heaven, Las Vegas. She was also seen with Chris Angel, mind freak, and he had just been seen making out with Paris Hilton. So if I had to see these photos, so do y'all. And in July of that year, Lindsay murders her career.
After leaving Vegas, Lindsay went back to LA and immediately fell back into her old routines. She was at Ledoux, Winston's, everywhere, just tearing up the town, which had everyone wondering whether or not she was staying faithful to her sobriety. The tabloids had stories about her secretly doing whippets in rehab, having vodka and water bottles, switching coke for Molly, and so much more, but no rumor as juicy as what would happen in the early hours of July 24th. This timeline is brought to you by Pop Culture Died in 2009, who has an amazing Tumblr post detailing this entire night and the weeks leading up to it with graphics and videos. And so, so I'll link that below if you want to check it out. After leaving dinner with one of her assistants, They met up with her other assistant, Taryn Graham, and they party all night long. The next day, paparazzis catch Lindsay out sunbathing. We're gifted with these photos of Lindsay's bikini and scram bracelet look. At this time, Taryn invites her boyfriend Dan and his friend Dante to come party with them. And shortly after midnight, Lindsay's attorney gets a signal from Lindsay's scram bracelet. Over in Malibu, Dan and his friends arrive to the party where they allegedly saw Lindsay drinking, and at some point, things escalated between Taryn and Lindsay for unknown reasons. Lindsay and Taryn come storming out of the party, and Lindsay's yelling at Taryn, and then Taryn quits. In her effort to storm off, she pulls her boyfriend out of Dante's car, unbeknownst to her that Lindsay would assume his position, and take off in Dante's car. One of Dante's friends tried to jump out of the car before Lindsay pulled off and ended up getting his foot rolled over, but Lindsay just kept going. She was going over 100 miles per hour, running red lights, and she chased Taryn all the way from Malibu to Santa Monica when she realized that Taryn was headed for her mother's house. So at that point, she tried to race to beat her there, and when she arrived at the house, a car was pulling out of the driveway. In this car was Taryn's mom, Michelle Peck, and Michelle noticed the car flying down the road, so she starts going backwards, and then Lindsay starts to chase her, and then Michelle's obviously terrified, so her and the passenger in her car start calling 911. Stay on a complete with the emergency. Yes, sir. I'm so. Hello? In Montana. You're at where in Montana, ma'am? Is this a police officer? No, it's not. This is the Santa Monica police. What? Is he behind you? Is he behind you? Well, no. Where are you, ma'am? Ma'am. Right now we're on 7th and Wilshire. Okay, what's going on there? I don't. We were we were just about to park her car. We are coming home, and out of nowhere, a huge white GMC came up and were being followed by a GMC. The gentleman okay. jumped out of the car. And what did he do? It. Oh my God, sir! They're following us. We need help. Oh, where okay. are you? We're well, right now. We're on Arizona. Sir, we're coming right now. We're driving to the police station, sir. Please. Okay, but what? What did he? The gentleman came out of his car. There he is. It's that white, white GMC pickup. Listen, oh my God, listen sir. to me, ma'am. Listen to me, okay? Answer my question. Oh my answer my answer my questions okay i need to ma'am they're in front of hq now roll somebody code ma'am what's going on there and they drive straight through the santa monica civic center parking lot to the police department where Lindsay is surrounded by cops and the show is over she fails her field sobriety test blows a point 13 and they find a clinique sun care card in her back pocket that's caked with powder but according to Lindsay, they weren't her genes, so it's fine. This piece of evidence also wasn't used against her in court because the cops threw it away. Lindsay's finally arrested for a second DUI, felony cocaine possession, and driving on a suspended license, when she's booked, this time rocking the world with her very first mugshot. And this is where I need to cue the career-ending music. <laughs> Lindsay always had a reputation as a bad girl who liked to drink and party, maybe dabble in some sniffle snacks, but for the most part, everyone thought it was a phase. And because this was really only the beginning of her career in years prior to 2007, the consensus among everyone was that she would probably get her shit together, but they were wrong. After her first arrest, she made a statement to Access Hollywood that, yes, I'm innocent, I do not do drugs, they're not mine, I was almost hit by my assistant Taryn's mom. I appreciate everyone giving me privacy. She checks into Cirque Lodge rehab facility in August, and later that month she goes to court where she pleads guilty to misdemeanor cocaine use and driving under the influence. In September, Michael visits her, and this is the first time we see Lindsay out in public with her dad in a long time. This rehab facility isn't too different from the last one, though. She's leaving with her now boyfriend, Riley Giles, who, by the way, was currently having a public beef with his ex-girlfriend on MySpace. And she kind of just gets to do what she wants, which seems to be a recurring theme. We see this again, in fact, when she goes to jail. I use that term very loosely because of her one-day sentence. 
and she served only 84 minutes due to a classic case of overcrowding. You know how that goes. Then we move to 2008. Lindsay leaves One Oak in an $11,000 mink coat that she did not show up in. The owner of said coat, a student named Marsha Markova, saw the treasured gift from her grandmother on Lindsay and paparazzi photos. After she complained to the club, the coat was returned smelling like cigarettes and booze. In February, Lindsay poses for New York Magazine recreating Marilyn Monroe's iconic last sitting photo shoot, which was her last photo shoot before her overdose. That summer, Dina gets her own show that Cody and Allie also co-star in called Living Lohan, and it's all about Dina being a momager. It gets awful ratings and it's labeled as exploitative of Allie, Lindsay's younger sister. They covered Allie trying to get into music and acting, as well as being bullied by people at school because of Lindsay. I watched a few episodes. Grand, I didn't watch the entire thing because NBC's streaming thing has two and a half minute ad breaks, but I thought the show was fine. I didn't find the delivery of the bullying or harassment stories inappropriate. The overall message in Allie's case seemed to be stay grounded and don't worry about what other people think or say, and this was something she was really dealing with, so. I thought there were actually a lot of sweet moments in the show and the kids all seem really real and normal, so. I don't know. Later that year, Lindsay returns to acting after her box office flopathon, and she appears on Ugly Betty with a small role as one of Betty's friends from childhood, Kimmy. She was originally booked to do six episodes, but Page Six reported that America Ferreira, the woman who plays Ugly Betty, and Lindsay were not getting along. Some sources reported that Lindsay wouldn't go on set before America and that she trashed her dressing room to the point where it needed to be repainted. But other sources who were reportedly friends of Lindsay said that America was being so rude to Lindsay all throughout filming, and she actually complained to producers, which is why Lindsay's storyline was cut short. They also said that Lindsay only brought her mom, her assistant, Samantha, and a sober companion to the dressing room, so if it was destroyed, it would have been done by someone else. There was also reportedly an incident where America pulled Lindsay's pants down as a part of a scene, but she wasn't actually supposed to do it for rehearsals, but she did it anyway, and Lindsay was in just a G-string, and she was so embarrassed that she cried. So the consensus was that Ugly Betty, while a good career moment from the outside, was a train wreck. By the way, reps for ABC, America, and Lindsay all say everything went fine, so this is all alleged. You know how it goes. This year, she opened up in interviews about how irresponsibly she'd been spending her money, staying at the chateau every night instead of getting a house, partying all the time, hanging out with people who were getting wasted every night. She said she was ready to focus on her career again, but she still wasn't ready to rekindle that relationship with Michael. She reportedly cut off communication with him in 2007 and didn't want to talk to him until he was acting more mature. She was filming for her next movie, Labor Pains, and she was really ready to jump back into her career. Something huge that was happening in 2008 that was getting much more attention than Lindsay, though, was the election. Lindsay voiced her support for Obama as the first, what? First, you know, good president, you know, good president. She also voiced her disdain for Sarah Palin. Me too. And even offered her support to the Obama campaign team. They denied, but it's the thought that counts. A good thing for Lindsay that year though, was that she started a clothing line called 6126, where she sold designer leggings. The name, if you're wondering, is Marilyn Monroe's birth date. The leggings were sold at luxury retail stores like Neiman Marcus, Bloomingdale's, Fred Siegel, and even Dash Boutiques. And on his blog in late December, her father Michael calls a truce, where basically he will stop embarrassing himself every day by talking shit about his daughter and her girlfriend after he threatened to post emails, voicemails, documents because he's very concerned and it definitely has nothing to do with his dire need for attention. Most of the tabloid coverage of Lindsay this year though was about her relationship with Samantha Ronson. They're seen together all the time making out on yachts, fighting in the streets at night. Sam what's going on with you and Lindsay right now? Stop! Stop! Who, who is that? No, 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 no. I'm your girlfriend! No, who's this other person here? You know her. So why are you yelling her and her to stop? Because you wouldn't talk to me and where were you? Lindsay said in an interview when asked about her relationship that she might be bi, definitely not gay, but in 2013 she told Alan Carr that she was definitely straight, so... Lindsay and Sam ring in New Year's together at one of Sam's gigs, but Perez Hilton reports that the situation around them was very tense and that Lindsay stormed off stage and they were seen fighting outside. Later in January, despite his truce, Michael posts a lengthy plea to his website, including background music by The Fray. He pleads the internet to help his daughter, whose life is being ruined by her girlfriend, who he calls Samantha. I bet you can see what he thought he was doing there. Interestingly enough, he actually got this funny little name from guess who? What? Not member of the LGBT community, Perez Hilton purposely misgendering an androgynous homosexual woman. 
but I want to go back to ignoring Michael and pretending he doesn't exist, so I think I'll do that now. The blogs and tabloids were all fired up when Scarlett poses for Dolce & Gabbana looking strikingly like Marilyn Monroe, which sparked people to compare the two, usually only to give full props to Scarlett and to point out Lindsay's shortcomings, especially in her career and body image issues. Scarlett is also reported in November of the year before, quote unquote, slamming Lindsay by saying she was really vulgar. All of this leads to Lindsay when being interviewed for Interview Magazine to say, what hurts the most is that I work just as hard as any actress my age, like Scarlett Johansson, but I don't get the opportunities they get because people are so distracted by the mess I created in my life. In March, a judge puts out a $5,000 warrant related to her Memorial Day weekend DUI, but takes it back after three days when her lawyer shows that she's been complying with her probation. In April of that year, we have her very public breakup with Sam. Sam was DJing a party for her sister Charlotte at the Chateau where Lindsay lived, and she supposedly hired five bodyguards to keep Lindsay away from the party and rented the room right beneath her where she partied and cheated on her all night long. And then Lindsay took to Twitter to possibly formally break up with her. It's not known whether or not this was the formal breakup, but... This was really tumultuous for her. She was talking to the tabloids the day after. This was followed, of course, by public feud with Perez Hilton, which led to these tweets. In May, an alarm at Lindsay's house is tripped, and at first they think it was a false alarm, but once police arrive, they find out that there was an attempted robbery. When they went inside, they believed the house had been ransacked, but it turned out it was just really messy. Lindsay's straight-to-TV movie Labor Pains debuts on ABC Family in June. She doesn't do any press for the movie and declines requests for interviews. In August, police are dispatched to Lindsay's house again after she arrived home and many of her personal belongings were missing. After they reviewed the footage, they found that the people who robbed Lindsay were actually the same people who robbed Audrina Patridge from the hills in the footage that she posted on her website. And it was later found that these were the same teenagers who had also robbed Orlando Bloom, Paris Hilton, and Rachel Bilson. In October, her probation is extended 12 months, giving Lindsay time to complete her alcohol education program, which she'd failed to do up until this point. She also becomes the creative director of Inagro, and her collection is called Disastrous. People hate it, and after less than a year, she and the head of the company both step down. In April of 2010, Lindsay poses for a photo shoot with a gun covered in blood. The rest of 2010 is going to be the part of the video where I say a bunch of legal stuff and a bunch of numbers and dates, so buckle in. In May, Lindsay goes to Cannes Film Festival in France to promote herself in the lead role of an upcoming biopic covering 70s porn star Linda Lovelace. She has a court date for May 20th, but that same morning, she and Dina report that her passport has been stolen. They say they're in contact with the French embassy, but the situation's not looking good. Remember that this is a probation hearing concerning Lindsay's missed alcohol education classes that she was given an extension for last October. So if she misses the court date, it could result in jail time. Later that morning, the judge in her case rescinded her probation and set her bail at $100,000, as well as issuing a warrant. Her lawyer tried to argue that she did in fact intend to be there in court and at the classes, and that it was only once she had actually arrived to the airport that she realized she didn't have her passport. The judge, however, said that she would need to see some good faith evidence to see that she was en route home, such as a ticket. She's ordered not to drink any alcohol and is fitted for yet another scram bracelet as soon as she enters the US. She's also subject to random drug testing at least once a week until her next hearing. She pays her $100,000 bail and is free for now. At an MTV Movie Awards after party, her scram bracelet notifies representatives of the small amount of alcohol in her system. Two days later, she doesn't go to jail for her hearing where the judge decides she was in violation of her parole and issues a warrant as well as raising her bail to $200,000. A bail bondsman covers her bail and she's free once again. At her next hearing on July 6th, Lindsay faced 90 days in jail for still not having completed her required AA and alcohol education program. According to Lindsay's attorney, Lindsay was given permission from the company to miss her classes so long as she made them up. And she was taking her program seriously as she only had two AA meetings left and was due to be finished with the alcohol education program that week. Lindsay also took the stand to plea with the judge. I wanted to make sure that I would come back here making you happy and the court system and show that I meant everything I put into it. <laughs> But Lindsay's luck ran out and the judge just wasn't buying it. Defendant <coughs> is ordered to spend 30 days in jail on the reckless driving case, 30 days in jail on the first DUI case. 
Lindsay sentenced to 90 days in jail, 30 for each charge that she was facing, and she must submit to 90 days in rehab no more than two days after being released from jail, all while TMZ is live streaming. The next morning, Lindsay's court manicure is all over headlines when it's revealed that her nail secretly said <laughs> July 20th, she turns herself in and serves two weeks in jail due to overcrowding. A new judge on the case changes her probation and allows her to live in her home, and her attorney promises that she's learned her lesson. Less than a month later, Lindsay takes to Twitter saying, Regrettably, I did in fact fail my most recent drug test, and if I'm asked, I'm prepared to appear before Judge Fox next week as a result. Her failed drug test revealed amphetamines and cocaine in her system. A week later, she appears in court where her probation is revoked and she's cuffed and taken to jail. That same night though, another judge overturns the ruling and grants her a $300,000 bail and another trusty scram bracelet. Lindsay checks into Betty Ford Treatment Center and the judge warns her that if she fails another drug test, she will serve 180 days in jail. Also, after this strict warning from the judge, we get these photos leaked. I'm not sure exactly what I can show, but the photos show Lindsay with something tied around her arm and a held up to it. Granted, the photos don't show her with the needle in her arm, but drugs kind of shouldn't have been a joke for her at all at this time. There's also these photos of her and Paris making out, so there's that. While at Betty Ford, Lindsay's involved in an altercation with an employee. Sheriff's Department, we got a 911 call from there. Please don't go with her. I'm sorry, I'm really uncomfortable with the woman that's in our house. I've never seen her before and she's freaking me out. Hello? Her yes. name Officer, I am definitely willing to speak with you as long as she gets off the phone so that we can talk. Come. You're discharging, Kelly. Oh, you're s. Why? Yeah, no, Lindsay, you need to text me. What? Because I'm hearing. Now I'm getting ready to fall charges on you. No problem. Get ready to be sued. What, do you want money? What happened is we had three ladies to just hop over the back wall and leave, we were supposed to breathalyze them upon their return. Two of the ladies are reeking of alcohol. One of them breathalyzed at uh, 0 0.010. The other one refused to breathalyze. Um, she did admit to drinking. And the third party, which is Lindsay Lohan, is um, being rude. She's gotten on the phone with her mom and she's telling her mom I'm being rude to her. So, so Lindsay was, was one of the ones that jumped the fence Oh, left. yeah. She was, well, she got busted trying to hop back over the... And the employee violates confidentiality rules of the rehab facility by giving the identity of the patient, Lindsay Lohan, to the press, and she's fired. In January 2011, Lindsay leaves rehab, and the sheriff's department finds that she was in violation of her parole when she fought with the Betty Ford employee. However, the employee chose to drop the charges and refused to comply with the police any farther. Later that month, Lindsay's caught on security footage stealing a reportedly one-of-a-kind necklace from a Venice jewelry store. She's charged with felony theft and is given three months to decide whether or not she wants to take her plea deal. She rejects the plea and is sentenced to 120 days and 480 hours of community service for violation of her parole and her felony theft charge is lowered to a misdemeanor. In April, she serves a hard five hours and she's released after posting a $75,000 bond. She begins her community service. In May, a hearing's held in which Lindsay's found guilty of theft and sentenced to 120 days in jail and 480 hours of community service, contingent with the sentence she's already working on. When Lindsay goes to turn herself in, she's fitted with an ankle monitor and released to serve her sentence at home. Not to be confused with the scram bracelet because the judge actually failed to renew her alcohol and drug testing requirements, which was a major over Oversight. While serving at home, Lindsay takes advantage of this and holds rooftop parties. In June, after she fails an alcohol test, she's required to attend court where the judge says while she's not guilty of violating her parole, as those provisions weren't renewed, she is guilty of extremely poor judgment, but that's not a crime, so. A month later, she's released from house arrest and it's time for her to start on her community service, including 360 hours at the Los Angeles Downtown Women's Center and 120 hours at the county morgue. Amidst all of this, Lindsay's new movie Machete comes out, but she legally can't do any press for it. In October, her probation's revoked again for failure to complete her community service. She had posted nine excused absences at trial and performed at most two hours of service total. She's arrested and released two hours later after posting $100,000 bail. The next day, she arrives late for her first day of service at the morgue. She's ordered to serve 30 days for violating parole, and after she's released, she's to complete at least 12 days a month at the county morgue until she completes the 53 remaining days, and she must attend 18 psychotherapy sessions. Five days later, she's booked and released almost immediately. For the next three months straight, Lindsay has perfect attendance at community service and therapy. 
The judge compliments her several times for her improvement, and when her formal probation is ended on March 29, 2012, the judge tells her, live your life in a more mature way, stop the night clubbing, and focus on your work. She's still on informal probation for the next two years, though, for the necklace stealing thing. Lindsay hosts SNL for the third time in March. Leading up, people were buzzing about a possible comeback. She poked fun at herself in skits, and her performance was pretty well received. You know, this studio feels like a home to me. <laughs> So the alarm goes off if I leave the stage? I thought it was only if I left the studio. And I thought you guys trusted me. Hey, hey how's it going? Hey, Keenan. Hey, so good to see you again. You know, I forgot how beautiful your eyes are. Thanks, Keenan. Can I see them? Uh, okay. Yeah, can I see your eyes, please? Uh. Later that month, while trapped by photographers, she allegedly hits a car and then a person while trying to drive off. No charges are pressed. In May, Lindsay guest stars on Glee. This, however, is a new source of drama for her. She reportedly shows up six hours late and complains that she wants a better trailer. Besides usual tabloid BS, Lindsay's doing pretty good at this time. She's seen with big Hollywood names like child predator and sick, foul, disgusting pedophile Woody Allen. And she even gets invited to a White House correspondence dinner. Looks like all that Obama rallying worked out after all. She's also filming her new Lifetime movie, Liz and Dick. On her way to set in June, Lindsay hits a dump truck with her car and allegedly her people try to pay the man not to call the police, but it was too late. Late, they come and Lindsay tells them her assistant was driving. A week later, she's hospitalized for heat exhaustion. In September, Lindsay clips someone with her car in New York, but charges are dropped due to insufficient evidence. Later, cops are dispatched to her family home in Long Island after a domestic disturbance, but no charges are pressed. <laughs> Her Lifetime movie premieres and it gets terrible ratings, mostly because while the makeup and hair might have looked enough like Elizabeth Taylor, her voice sounded nothing like her. Lindsay has a pretty distinctive raspy voice, while Elizabeth Taylor also has a pretty distinctive soft transatlantic kind of accent that a lot of actresses had back then. Not to mention it was a Lifetime movie, so it was born to be shit. She then gets arrested for punching a woman in the face at a nightclub, but they let her go. But she doesn't get off free. She's charged with lying to police in her June dump truck accident because she was, in fact, driving. At the end of 2012, the IRS seizes all of Lindsay's bank accounts because she owes more than $200,000 in back taxes from 2009 and 2010, and then some unknown amount from 2011. While she's working on filming Scary Movie 5 with Charlie Sheen, he actually pays $100,000 of her taxes for her but apparently that wasn't even scraping the surface because she had so much unpaid taxes. Her dad, Michael, comes out and says he's concerned because he's like, where is her money going? Because he knows that she just got paid $100,000 for promoting Mr. Pink's energy drink in Dubai. And it's actually alleged that she turned down a subsequent endorsement because she wanted double the offered $200,000. Lindsay found a way to handle these financial problems she was facing, and that was with three sugar daddies. Billionaire Prince Haji Abdul Azim, Hotelier Vikram Shatwal, and Spanish American artist Domingo Zapata. Prince Azim allegedly paid her $100,000 just to go to his New Year's Eve party, and he flew her and Dina out and put them up at the Dorchester. All right. And she was actually driving Domingo Zapata's Porsche when she hit that pedestrian in New York. Y'all remember that? And I feel like I haven't mentioned her age in a while, so I want to say that Lindsay is only 26 at this point. Some celebrities that are 26 right now include Justin Bieber, Harry Styles, Danny Gonzalez, Boo Boo Stewart, Mahogany Locks, Take Off from Migos. Is that enough examples? She's still so young, so the possibility that she could turn her career around is still viable. And luckily, she's cast in a new film called The Canyons, which is an extremely small budget film and the New York Times comes to the set to interview her. They publish a cover story called Here's What Happens When You Cast Lindsay Lohan in Your Movie where they say she's flaky and simultaneously too self-aware and not self-aware enough. The article is a nightmare. They say she got fired and begged the director for her job back. She refused the four-way sex scene that she signed to in the contract. 
billed $600 lunch for a film with a $250,000 budget, partied up until literally 30 minutes before her call time with Lady Gaga, and allegedly made some uncomfy comments when acting in an abuse scene. In 2013, Michael Lowen came out and said that Lindsay's first overdose was actually when she was 18. He said that while she was filming Just My Luck in New Orleans in 2005, she overdosed on coke after one of her assistants had given it to her. And he said that he was so angry about this that he got a gun and was on his way to New Orleans to go kill the person that had given it to her. But he apparently also grabbed a drink too because this is when he got that DUI. Remember that one I said I was going to bring up later forever ago and now I'm finally bringing it up? In March of 2013, she shows up 45 minutes late to court for hitting the dump truck. Someone throws glitter on her on the way in. I don't know why, but that's what that is in the photos. She accepts a plea deal, which means 90 days in rehab, and on the deadline, she goes to a rehab facility called Morningside, but the state officials end up realizing that it wasn't licensed, so she checks into Betty Ford again in May, and then switches to Cliffside Malibu in June, and then she's released in July, but she's required to attend therapy until November 2014. Lindsay guest stars on the show Eastbound and Down, and reportedly receives a standing ovation from the crew. And in August, she's interviewed by Oprah for Oprah's Next Chapter, where Oprah announces that this will be followed by an eight-part series, and filming for that begins in August. Things are doing pretty good for Lindsay, it seems. Dina, however, gets a DUI. She blows more than twice the legal limit after a Labor Day weekend party. In December 2013, Lindsay's allegedly involved in a fight between Farron Hilton and a club owner. There's more about that in my Lindsay in Paris video. The docuseries premieres in 2014. First of all, the first episode is not online. I cannot find it anywhere. So someone smarter than me, please help me find it if you can. In the show, she's reunited with Michael. He says that he hasn't seen her this good since 2006. And on only episode three, Oprah has to drive out to Long Island after Lindsay's being uncooperative with the filming and production crew. So I'll play. And I feel like you can tell by her reaction that the way Oprah's speaking to her here and trying to hold her accountable isn't something she's used to. And while yes, she has still been involved in controversies, I think she's personally doing a lot better for herself with her business ventures and her family and whatnot. And she's since said that Oprah saved her life. And I feel like if she had someone speaking to her like this, the way Oprah was the, for her whole career, we could have an A-list Lindsay Lohan right now. And I mean this guys, like there's a part where Oprah switches the conversation to her sobriety and congratulates her. And she immediately starts of the show. The ratings drop with every episode. And by the finale, they're the lowest they've ever been. Despite the fact that Lindsay drops a bombshell piece of information that she had a miscarriage during the filming of the show. Her movie, The Canyons, comes out. And I'm sure you can guess how it did. In 2014, she moves to London. And she's in a production of Speed the Plow. She said she really loves Broadway. She loves to be on stage and perform. The whole setup of it is really structured. And that's really helpful for her. And she says it was a really big turning point in her life, acting-wise. She also loves living in London and plans on staying there. She also mentioned in an episode of her mom's podcast a few months ago that she's discussed bringing Speed the Plow to Broadway or off-Broadway in America, so it seems as though she has a good relationship with the company, which is a vast improvement compared to her past relationships with crews that she's worked with. Late that year, she releases an app that people call a knockoff of Kim K. Hollywood, and it's called Lindsay Lohan's The Price of Fame, and positive reviews call it funny, trashy, and self-aware. In 2015, she's finally off probation after eight years. Hey, 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 hey. Also at this time, she gets a new 23-year-old manager named Scott Carlson. He was also Kygo's manager, and um, he manages to keep the headlines pretty clean for her for years. While living in London in 2016, she gets in a relationship with Russian heir Igor Tarabasov. I'll just call him Igor, who she's introduced to by a friend. She's also seen with a copy of the Quran and says that she's considering converting to Islam. Five months into their relationship with Igor, they get engaged, they later move in together. And only four months later, Lindsay posts a video on Instagram of Igor at a club with Russian socialite Dasha Pashevkina. And she says, wow, thanks, hashtag fiance with Russian hooker. First time in my life, bear with me, he cheated on me with a hooker. She then doxes her and puts this unintelligible caption. Let me know if you have any idea what she's trying to say because I nearly had a stroke reading it. Dasha denies these claims and said that she actually was a good friend of Lindsay and is actually the friend who set them up in the first place. And this situation is confusing to me because they definitely were friends, so. I don't know, there's a lot of evidence that Lindsay was a super insecure person, especially from her relationship with Sam though, so I wouldn't doubt it. Later that week, police break down the door of their apartment after neighbors call them hearing Lindsay screaming and saying, he's strangling me, but no charges are pressed. 
Only two weeks later, a video that was supposedly captured over Lindsay's 30th birthday weekend in Mykonos shows a violent altercation between the two of them. After this, Lindsay says in an interview that the worst part is that this wasn't the first time, and she's realized now that you can't stay in a relationship just for love. At the end of that year, she moves to Dubai, which is where she lives now. In 2017, Lindsay publicly defended Harvey Weinstein, and she first of all encourages that his wife stay with him and support him. Second, she does a classic, he never did anything to me. And third, she says that she thinks all allegations should be matters of the law rather than tabloids. But gorgeous, stunning queen Rose McGowan came out and defended Lindsay, saying, Please go easy on Lindsay Lohan. Being a child actor turned sex symbol twists the brain in ways you can't comprehend. In 2018, Lindsay was in another controversy when she went live on Instagram with this. Tell me your story so I can help you. You cold? You want to come with me? Come with me. Come. Three seconds. Run. <laughs> come in my car and I'll buy you a hotel room. I give you guys. Come, let's go. Don't fuck with me. You're ruining Arab culture by doing this. I will walk forever. Don't fuck with Pakistan. Give me your hand. She was accused of attempted kidnapping as well as being clearly intoxicated, which I second. The real revival of Lindsay's career comes in 2019 when Lindsay got her own show on MTV called Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club. The show got mixed reviews because Lindsay wasn't really in it. It was more about her American staff that was working at the club, so that was disappointing for viewers who were awaiting Lindsay content. I have to tell y'all about the episode that I watched that made me the angriest. So basically these girls go to the club and one of them sees the other one give the guy that she invited the good old fashioned European kiss. And then the next girl also gives it to him because that's how Europeans say hello. And she gets so mad about this. She's mad all night about it. They get back to the house. She calls the other girl out about it. And the girl's like, um, we're in Europe. And she's like, well, just because you're in Europe doesn't mean you go around kissing everyone. She's like, um, that's kind of how you say hi in Europe. But the other girl was annoying. So it's like, I wanted to root for her. But then she starts doing this face, y'all. <sighs> and she's like, keep that. And then the girl karate chops her in the neck and then squares up for a punch immediately after. <laughs> But other than that, Lindsay's lived in Dubai for a while. She's done a lot of modeling here and there. She also lived in Australia for a while. She was on The Masked Singer. She did some reunions this year for Parent Trap and Mean Girls, as well as appearing on her mom's podcast, which you should go listen to. I kind of like listening to her mom's podcast. She said that she's thinking about moving back to America and restarting her film career, so I guess we shall see. Also, I need to add that recently, like within the last few days, I've seen this video floating around. Oh, Famera president, it's me, Lohan. I call upon thy name to ask for forgiveness for <laughs> being a dirty little stinker. The fragrance of salvation is in the air. May the eye wink upon you. <laughs> So as you probably have heard, Lindsay was summoned via a cameo to basically do an ad for this app that's supposed to be like psychedelic Gen Z Omegle. And now people think she's like in a cult, which guys paired with those people from the Instagram live video, I, I don't know if I can take it anymore. I really don't. But yeah, I just need to say something about that because it's like happening right now. So, and I knew someone would eventually say something so yeah i really wanted to put this video out because i feel like Lindsay's a super misunderstood person first and foremost and while no she's obviously not perfect or the victim all the time or most of the time but i think that in the same way britney was kind of predisposed to hate after the crimea river music video Lindsay was predisposed to hate after having beef with america's sweetheart hillary duff which, might I add, is highly covered on YouTube, whereas Lindsay herself is not. So, I thought that was sad. So, here I am to fix this. So, if you like this video, let me know. But, I'ma see y'all later. Bye.